Hi guys, today's lesson is 3.4, graphing polynomials. So what we want to know is if we've got an equation, how can we take a look at the graph and what kind of details can we see from the equation that correspond to the graph? So the first thing we've got on this slide is we've got factored form. This is the same factored form that you would have seen in quadratics in grade 11, where you have those brackets that have x's in them. So in grade 11, we studied that those brackets actually tell you the x-intercepts, or what we can call zeros or roots in this um, lesson. So you might have it in factored form, or maybe you have everything already foiled out and you have it in expanded form. Our previous lesson we started with expanded form and we did synthetic division to fully factor polynomials. So expanded form looked something like this. And you might have all of those terms, you might have fewer, you might have more, but essentially it's a whole bunch of x's with exponents, and they each have coefficients in front of them. In both of these examples, we do have the very first coefficient a being what we can call the leading coefficient. And this actually tells us a lot about the end behavior of the function. So if you think about a quadratic that has a leading coefficient that's positive, that would be a parabola that opens up. A leading coefficient that's negative would make it open down. So the leading coefficient tells us about the end behavior. I want us to sketch now a degree four polynomial function where the a value is less than zero, which just means it's negative. So give yourself a Cartesian plane and let's go ahead and sketch a degree four polynomial function that has a negative leading coefficient. That would be similar to the example I told you about a quadratic with a negative coefficient um, opening down. So this is a degree four. All that means is it's still like a quadratic where it's going to go from quadrant three to four, but it's going to have another little loop-de-loo-ish thing in the middle, another little bump thing. Now that's what it's going to look like for degree four a negative, and let's talk about some of the things that we can see on this graph, starting with this point right here. This is your y-intercept, and remember in class I said every time you see that word y-intercept, I want you to think x equals zero. The next part is going to be these three or four points here. These are your x-intercepts. And remember, when you see intercept, think y equals zero for these. But these can also be called different things. From the last lesson, we saw that they can be called the roots, or they can be called zeros, all of which mean x-intercept. Now, I've drawn this purposefully like this because this would correspond in your equation to be B, C, D, and E. So see how all of those letters were with an X in brackets? That means that they were the X intercept, but be careful with the signs. You'll notice here that this is actually a negative B. So this might be the X intercept negative three, in which case the bracket up here would look like X plus three. Okay, so essentially the x-intercept that you see is the opposite sign of the number in the brackets. Moving on, let's draw this polynomial function of degree 3, so a cubic that has an a value greater than 0, aka positive. Here's my Cartesian plane, 
and let me go ahead and draw a cubic that has a positive a value. The way that I remember this is a cubic has the same end behavior as a degree of one, which is essentially a line, like the slope of a line. So y equals mx plus b has the same end behavior as y equals x cubed. So I'm looking at something that goes across. It's not like the last question where it basically makes um, like an arc. So it went from quadrant three to four, or if it was flipped upside down, it would have gone two to one. This is gonna go across the Cartesian plane and go from quadrant three to one. So here to here. I know that because it has a positive leading coefficient. If it was negative, it would drop across the Cartesian plane and go from two to four. So I'm going to draw something here that has a little loop-de-loo thing and now goes up on that side and starts down in quadrant three. Now we've got a y-intercept on this one as well. And we've got, in this case, three x-intercepts, which would be negative b, positive c, switch the sign, and positive d. The y-intercept, you can really only see if it's actually in expanded form. So if you had written this and you foil it out, And I'm still using A, B, C, D, but remember, these would not be the same numbers in factored form and expanded form. These would be different, but they're just representing coefficients here. The only thing that you really see from expanded form is you do have the exact same A, okay? And the constant, the thing without X, is your Y-intercept. Actually, I'm going to change that so those are different letters because I find this is just a bit confusing the way it's written. So I'll do L, M, and N. So your y-intercept would actually be your N value, the one without x, the constant. Now there's parts of this graph where we could use the terminology increasing and there's parts where we could use the terminology decreasing. So I'm going to actually draw a line through the maximum that I see, the local maximum because it's not the very top, and this local minimum. Now when you see this part of the cubic function, when you're sketching that like I did from left to right like you read a book, my pencil was going up. This is what we would call increasing. So this part of the cubic function is increasing. Now watch what happens as I go from left to right with my pencil in this part. I was going with my pencil and I was going down. This part is called decreasing. Once we hit that local min, it switches to going up again and is now increasing. This is just some terminology you might hear to describe what's happening with these functions. Now, some terminology you need to know is multiplicity, even powers, and odd powers. So the multiplicity is the power of the factor. What that means is when it's in factored form, it might look like this. Whoops. Okay, so some polynomial function is equal to x minus a squared bracket x minus b. The multiplicity is the power of each factor. So the multiplicity of x minus a, that factor, is 2. Oh my. The multiplicity of the factor x minus b is 1. We don't write the one, but it is there. Now, multiplicity, basically, it shows you if it's an even power, it's going to do something to the x-axis. And if it's odd, it's going to do something different to the x-axis. So even powers, like our x minus a that has a 
um, multiplicity of two, the graph is going to be tangent to the x-axis. So let me sketch this out so you see what is actually happening here. We've got some kind of polynomial function that maybe looks like this. Now see how one of those x-intercepts bounces off the x-axis? So this one right here is a bouncer. And one of these x-intercepts cuts right through the x-axis. That's what multiplicity is going to tell you. So this is going to tell you that if I have an even power, that the x-intercept A is a bouncer, so this is A. The x-intercept B with an odd multiplicity is cutting right through the x-axis. That's what we're actually talking about. Okay, so that works with any evens or odds that you're looking at. So this word tangent is what I'm talking about when I say it's bouncing off the x-axis or in more technical terms, you could say it just touches at one point. And then the odd powers are cutting through the graph. So using this information, we can actually do a pretty accurate sketch of polynomial functions just using these these facts and this knowledge. So we want to sketch and find degree, multiplicity, and the roots of the following. So one note to make, in factored form, the degree is when you add all exponents on the factors. And remember, the factors are those brackets with x's in them like this. Okay, you add them all up. This is only in factored form. So let's see what we know from this first polynomial. I want us to determine degree. I want us to decide if the a value is positive or negative, And I want us to state the roots, aka the x-intercepts. The degree, anything with an x you're going to add the exponents in factored form. Three plus, or two plus one, pardon me, is three. The a value, I'm gonna tell you that this one is positive so that you sketch it appropriately. And then we can actually say what the x-intercepts are exactly. Because it's in factored form, we simply have to switch the signs. So negative five and positive three are where we're going to touch or cross the x-axis. And our multiplicity is going to tell us if it's a bouncer or if it's cutting through. So multiplicity of x plus 5 is odd. It's the number 1. Odd multiplicity means this is going to cut the x-axis. The multiplicity of x minus 3 is even. So this is going to be a bouncer. So here we go, Cartesian plane. We need something at negative five, positive three. We have degree three, so we know it's gonna be a cubic, which is gonna look something like that, or maybe a little more bouncy in the middle. We know that it's a positive leading coefficient, so this is telling us to go quadrant three to quadrant one. Okay. So we got to go from down here in 3 to up here in 1. We have got to cut through negative 5, and we have got to bounce off 3. So here I go. Cut through negative 5, bounce off 3, quadrant 3 to quadrant 1. You can pause the video and rewind so that you can listen to all that again if you kind of missed it. Next example. So find for me degree 
I'm going to tell you A is positive. Tell me the roots, tell me their multiplicity, and try to sketch. Pause the video and see how much of this you can do on your own. Degree for this polynomial, if I add the exponents, is 5. The roots are x equals negative 3 and x equals 4. The x-intercept at negative 3 has a multiplicity of 3, so it's going to cut the x-axis. The x-intercept of 4 has a multiplicity of 2, which is even, so it's going to be a bouncer. Now, degree 5 is essentially the same as cubic, which we just drew, but it has an extra little loop-de-loo in the middle. So if I think about some sketches here, degree 1 might look just like a straight line. Degree 3, so I'm just doing odd, is going to look like what we just did. Sometimes it does, instead of being really bouncy in the middle, it does just kind of, this is what we call an inflection point. It just levels off a little bit and keeps going up. And 5 is just going to get even more bouncy in the middle and have another extra loop-de-loo thingy. Or it could just be really leveled off in the middle like that, too. So here we go. I need to have an x-intercept at negative 3. That's cutting through. I need to have an x-intercept at 4. That's bouncing off. It needs to be degree 5. And it needs to be, uh, pardon me, it needs to be a positive, so going from quadrant 3 to quadrant 1. Now, the multiplicity being 3 means you're going to have it more dragging against the x-intercept instead of cutting straight through, it needs to drag a bit because the multiplicity is bigger. So basically it needs to do that, level off a bit, and then it can go up and give you another little loop-de-loo thing, and then it can bounce off four. Next example, the polynomial P of X is given all with numbers. So we know that A is positive 3. There's X intercepts at 2, negative 1, and 4. 2 and negative 1 are multiplicity of 1, so they're cutting through. And 4 is multiplicity of 2, so it's a bouncer. So if we draw this, it'll be helpful for you just to have all the information written out here. So multiplicity of 2 on the 4 means we're going to bounce. These two we're going to cut through. It's a degree of 2, 3, 4. So it's like a quadratic with an extra little loop-de-loo something in the middle. Positive A value means it needs to be opening up. So here's negative 1, 2, and 4. Cutting through the first two bouncing off the second one, opening up. This is potentially P of X. The one thing we're glossing over that we don't know how to calculate without, you know, foiling everything out is we don't know exactly where the y-intercept is. We know which side of the x-axis it's on, but we don't know exactly where it is. And we don't know exactly where the minimum point is here. We're just kind of making that up. But in general, we have the correct shape. Pause the video and try the last one. The last one is a degree 5 function with a negative a value. It has roots, aka x-intercepts, at negative 3 and 5. Negative 3 has a multiplicity of 2 and therefore is bouncing off of the x-axis. 
x equals 5 has a multiplicity of 3 and therefore needs to drag through the x-axis as it cuts it. Here we go. Degree 5 goes diagonally across the Cartesian plane because it's an odd degree. A negative a value means it needs to go from quadrant 2 to quadrant 4. It'd be like having a negative slope on a line. It needs to go through negative 3 and 5. It needs to bounce off negative 3 and it needs to drag through 5. Here's an example. So for this section, you need to do some textbook work listed on this page. And there's also a worksheet posted on the website that you can do with an answer key to check your work. Please email me if you have any questions. I would love to help.